The Asabo Loop Campground is located in the northern part of Michigan's Lower Peninsula, just to the east of Mayo. To access the campground, you have to go north of town and then come back down to the campground. Otherwise, you're going to be canoeing or kayaking to get to the campground. As you pull into the pretty remote-feeling campground, you have a pretty large pay station here. The cost to stay at one of the only five sites is $10 a night. Most campgrounds are $20, but this one is only 5 You have a large map of the river with different areas highlighted. There's your information. You have to pay $5 just to use the area, $10 to stay, invasive species warning, and a posting about not too many vehicles or people at one site at a time. Probably they have issues with large crowds coming here hoping to stay along the river to do some really good trout fishing. Since there's only five sites, I'm going to walk through and show you all of the sites at the campground. These sites are not very big at all. Online it says they can support up to a 25 foot rig, but I think that'd be pushing it unless it's a really small 25 feet and no vehicle attached, no boat, nothing like that. Most of the sites are plenty big enough for a tent or a small pop-up camper. And most of them are pretty exposed to the sun and back up to this almost thinned out forest meadowy feeling area. So right here where I'm at, you can park your camper or trailer and then you walk back to your little bit of a recreation area here to your picnic table, to your fire ring, you have your lantern post. So this campground, some of the sites are set up a little bit different. Usually you pull in and everything's right there at your lot. This one they have post up, preventing you from ripping up the terrain and causing erosion, killing some of the plants out there. They want you to stay within the limits that they've designated, and then you can walk back to your picnic area. I was actually super surprised to see that none of these sites were taken. This is actually a really nice little campground with great opportunity to do some fishing. This is campsite number four. These campsites, having so few of them here, are more secluded feeling than what you would normally be. There's only five campsites. That means you're not right on top of a neighbor to your left or to your right. They're spaced out really well. It's a beautiful day and it's like 80 degrees early in the summer season still. It's early June. I just can't believe that there's not people here fishing. I did see some information about local wildlife and nothing really caused me to feel like there was bear issues here. However, it is bear territory. I ended up later on in the day seeing a black bear up the road not too far. I hopped out of my vehicle and tried to chase it down for some photos, of course, but it outran me. So there are bear in the area, but I'm going to guess that they don't bother this location too often. They have recently updated the fire rings and gave you a little spot to cook on them if that's what you're after. Speaking of bear, we have the first bear-proof garbage containers that I've seen in months. I'm going to show you how they work here. You stick your hand up inside and push a lever, and black bears can't do that. So black bears can't get their paws up around that metal plate, and we can bend our fingers to fit up in there. So these are considered bear-proof. And they supposedly work really well. I don't know why more campgrounds don't do this. They're bear proof and raccoons can't fit their hands up in there either. They're not that long of an arm to be able to do that. Make sure that's latched before I leave. And look, they're actually called bear save. Definitely bear proof. I wish that more campgrounds would put them in. It'd help with some of the litter issues just from the raccoons and other pests like that alone. Right up the path from those handy little garbage cans is the hand pump. And you know I'm going to test it out since there's not water dripping all over around it. We've got to see how well this works. Let's see how well the well works. Holy cow, we got water already coming out on the third pump. This has to be one of the most efficient hand pump wells that I've dealt with in years. Most of the time I'm on like 12, 13, 14 thinking is water even going to come out and then suddenly it does. This was only three little pumps. Checking out the outhouses, you can see some wear and tear on the outside, but the inside is nicely updated. 
smells like it hasn't been used in weeks, which perhaps it really hasn't, who knows. There is a short hiking trail here off of the campground, and this hiking trail goes off towards the river and actually will lead you towards another campground called River Dune Campground. Posted here are some fishing regulations on the river. And you can see it's been updated a little bit. That's a newer pole off to the side. They want you to scrub your feet with the brush, or I should say scrub your shoes, so you're not taking invasive plant seeds into the area with you. Let's keep it as natural and the way it's meant to be as possible. I'm going to hike up the trail just a short ways here. Give somewhat of an idea of what it's like. I'm not going to go too far. It's pretty warm and I am ready for a drink. I bet it's like 83 degrees out here. It's a really warm January day for northern Michigan. Here we are at an area up above the Asabo River. We're coming up on a nice view here. And it looks like a turtle maybe was trying to lay some eggs. Something was digging right there. We got some short steps down to the water's edge. Actually, the steps are huge, but it's just a short path down to the water's edge. Here is our first real look at the Asabo River. You can't really see it from any of the campsites, but looking around from the campground here from this little bit of access point, you can see there's just nothing but wilderness. It's so quiet and so peaceful. Leaving the campground now, there is another little parking spot just up the way. This parking spot is not really meant to hold a lot of vehicles. You could maybe squeeze three in here. And what it is, it leads you to another little path that you can go down and get to some more individual solo campsites. These campsites are meant for canoers and kayakers on the river. They are definitely not meant to be used up by hikers and backpackers. They are intended only for use by canoers and kayakers spending the night along the side of the river. Again, traveling down the road a little bit farther, we have another parking area. This one's quite a bit larger because I'm sure it's quite a bit more popular of a stop for most travelers up in the area. With just a few steps from this parking area, you walk right up to some information stations and an excellent scenic view of the Asabo River. Here's the information on those information stations if you want to pause or zoom in or read it. If you don't, continue on with the video because I'm about to launch my drone and give you 
a really nice air view of quite a bit of the Asalbo River. I hope you really enjoyed this air view of the river because I actually almost lost my drone when it got too far out of range, completely lost signal, and I didn't think it was going to return. Luckily, it did. <laughs>